has part of the secret Google search algorithm just been exposed? In a shocking turn of events, Google accidentally published over 2,500 pages of Google Search API documentation, and they indicate that Google has been lying to us about key aspects of how its search engine operates. This revelation could mark one of the most pivotal moments in SEO history, potentially transforming our entire approach to search optimization. Welcome to this week's Marketing News Roundup. I'm Mark Webster, co-founder of Authority Hacker and strategic advisor at Marketing Pros. This video is brought to you by Search Intelligence, more about them later. But for now, let's dive into exactly what these leaked documents reveal about the inner workings of Google's algorithm. In a groundbreaking revelation, Rand Fishkin from SparkToro has publicized internal documentation from Google Search's Content Warehouse API. These documents reveal a treasure trove of information about the data Google collects from its users and its various products. The documents were published to a public GitHub code repository and captured by an external automated documentation service. According to Danny Goodwin from Search Engine Journal, this was an accident, not an intentional leak. The mistake was corrected on May 7th, but the automated documentation remains live. The documents were apparently discovered by Irfan Azimi, CEO of EA Eagle Digital, and Fishkin confirmed this in a comment on Azimi's video. To ensure authenticity, Fishkin reached out to several ex-Googlers who confirmed the documents appear legitimate. And this isn't a case of outdated information coming to light. With a March 27th published date, these documents appear very recent, potentially even reflecting the current algorithm. Fishkin enlisted Mike King from iPool Rank, a highly skilled technical SEO, to analyze the technical aspects of the documentation. King released his own findings and confirmed the leak contains an extraordinary amount of previously unconfirmed information about Google's inner workings. We'll dive into all these findings in a second, but I want to start by tempering expectations. Fishkin makes it clear that the mentioned features are not conclusive proof of a Google ranking factor. The leak provides valuable insights, but it's not a complete blueprint of Google's algorithm. There's no mention of how these potential factors are weighted within the algorithm, and some of the elements may be experimental or no longer in use. However, the documents distinctly label features that have been depreciated. This strongly suggests that everything without a depreciated label is currently active in the algorithm. Much of what's included also corroborates the testimonies of Google executives, adding credibility. So let's start with the most shocking revelations. Google has lied to us about quite a few things. First is their use of click data. Google analyst Gary Ills has said clicks are not directly used in rankings. But in reality, the NavBoost ranking system, which is mentioned 84 times in the documentation, has a specific module for click signals. It gets pretty dense, but the gist is that Google uses clicks and post-click behavior as part of its ranking algorithms. They track good clicks and bad clicks, and even measure the date of the last good click to a document. According to King, this could mean the content decay, or traffic loss over time, is partially caused by a page not driving the expected amount of good clicks for its position in the SERPs. What this means is if users are found to engage less deeply over time or pogo stick back to search and click another result, then your rankings will likely fall over time. This system makes Google mimic social networks where engagement is the number one metric that decides how widespread the distribution of a piece is. Rand Fishkin must feel particularly good about this one as Google's Gary Ills has called his theory of Google using click data made up crap. Google also claimed they don't care about domain authority. However, the documents reveal Google has a feature called site authority. We don't know how this is used, but it suggests that the concept of website authority exists and is used in the Google algorithm. Shocker, I know. Google search advocate John Mueller also claimed that they don't use Chrome data for ranking. However, one module related to page quality scores features a site level measure of views from Chrome. And another module related to generating site links has a Chrome related attribute as well. Google has also denied the existence of a sandbox for new websites that limits their ability to rank until they reach a certain age. But the documentation indicated Google has an attribute called host age to limit new sites. This means that newer sites may be held back in rankings until they're deemed trustworthy. Google's apparent lies aside, let's move on to some actionable insights for business owners from this leak. One of the most interesting insights comes from Irfan Azimi, the apparent source of the information. He says that the NavBoost ranking system is essentially a personalized algorithm on steroids. Azimi claims that users' actions influence the rankings of other users in their location and demographic. Fishkin expands on this with an example. If many people in Seattle search for Lehman Brothers and scroll until they find the Lehman Brothers theater website, Google will quickly realize that's what people in Seattle want when they type the query. They won't find the Wikipedia link to the failed financial firm anymore. He continues by saying that if you can create demand for your website among enough likely searchers in the regions targeting, 
you may be able to ignore the classic SEO signals like links and optimized content to rank. There are many other findings too. For example, Google explicitly stores the author of a page and whether an entity on that page is also the author. Google cares who your authors are, which validates an important element of EAT. There's also clear evidence of algorithmic demotions for a variety of reasons. These include an anchor mismatch, which is when the link does not appear relevant to the site it's linking to. SERP demotion, which likely has to do with user dissatisfaction as measured by clicks. Nav demotion, which likely applies to pages with bad navigation or user experience. Exact match domains demotion, which means exact match domains don't get as much value. And location demotion, which suggests Google attempts to associate pages with a location and rank them accordingly. Page titles are still crucial. The title match score variable indicates that how well your page title matches the query is a valuable ranking factor. Content freshness is also important, as is ensuring your published and last updated dates are consistent across structured data, page titles, XML sitemaps, and anywhere else dates are listed. There's also a series of metrics dedicated to fighting link spam. Basically, Google can detect spikes in spam anchor text and negate negative SEO attacks. It's comforting to know that, especially considering the disavow tool may not be around much longer. King couldn't find any mention of disavow data, and John Mueller has hinted that Google may be removing the disavow tool soon. Google also tracks domain registration dates, likely to inform sandboxing of new content and domains that have changed ownership. This has likely become more relevant with the expired domain abuse spam policy. Interestingly, Google has a label for small personal websites. While the definition is unclear, this could be used to either boost or demote such sites. So who wants to bet Housefresh has this label? Google tracks the average weighted font size of terms and anchor text in documents. This is likely because many people don't use heading formatting properly, so Google uses font size to help determine the intended headings on a page. We've covered some of the biggest findings, but we couldn't fit everything worth learning into this video. SEOs around the world will be analyzing this release for months to come. If there are any more important revelations, we'll report them on here, so take a moment to make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Arguably, the most important takeaway is that building a brand matters more than anything else if you want to do well in search these days. Fishkin says, if there's one piece of universal advice I had for marketers seeking to broadly improve their organic search rankings and traffic. It would be build a notable, popular, well-recognized brand in your space outside of Google search. This means that search marketing has flipped 180 degrees. Up until a few years ago, SEO was a discovery engine that you could use to build up other channels. But now people find you on other channels, prefer your content in search, and give you a boost in search as a result. Basically, building a brand outside of Google eventually pays you back in organic Google traffic. This would explain the mysterious case of CJ Eats, a DR28 site that recently shot up to 1 million estimated monthly visits, according to Ahrefs. This was during a time that many similar recipe sites tanked heavily during a recent round of updates. He's probably doing so well because he's focused on external marketing. His TikTok has 1.1 million followers and his Instagram is close behind at 1 million. Many searchers recognize his brand when they search for recipes and they click his content over others they don't recognize. They also spend more time on the page because they trust him more. This means higher click-through rates and dwell times, and Google ranks the site higher than his competitors. We discussed this case and brand building in more detail on our latest podcast. The link is in the description. To round out the story, Fishkin sums up the situation nicely. For most small and medium businesses and newer creators or publishers, SEO is likely to show poor returns until you've established credibility, navigational demand, and strong reputation among a sizable audience. Oh, and we forgot one potential ranking factor. King suggests that the indexing tier of a page impacts its link value. Think of it like Google organizing their index into three levels. The most important and frequently updated content is stored in flash memory, which is the fastest way to retrieve information. Less important content is kept on solid state drives, while content that isn't updated often is stored on regular hard drives. This means that the higher a page's tier, the more valuable the link. King claims that fresh content is seen as high quality, so you want links from pages that are either fresh or in the top tier. This is why links from higher ranked pages and news pages help improve your ranking more effectively than older content edits, for example. This confirms digital PR is one of the best ways to obtain high quality links at the moment. And speaking of digital PR, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Search Intelligence. They're a digital PR agency who recently capitalized on Coldplay frontman Chris Martin's admission that he only eats one meal per day. They contacted journalists to provide expert commentary from their client, Bulk.com. Now their data-driven approach looked at trends on both Google and TikTok to find insights that fitness and nutrition experts were sure to love. And sure enough, they landed 40 links from super high quality websites, including Healthline and Huffington Post. 
So if you're looking for a digital PR campaign to supercharge your link building, head on over to search-intelligence.co.uk. The rollout of AI-generated overviews in US search results is taking a disastrous turn. Mainstream media outlets like the New York Times, BBC, and CNBC have reported numerous inaccuracies and bizarre responses from these AI overviews. And many users are begging Google for a way to turn them off. Some of the more ridiculous results have been widely shared on social media, including recommendations to use non-toxic glue to get cheese to stick to pizza, or recommendations to eat one small rock per day, an answer that was apparently sourced from satirical publication, The Onion. Yes, the same onion that once convinced North Korea that Kim Jong-un has been voted the sexiest man alive. These over-the-shoulder answers are fun to laugh at, but the real issue is the potential for Google's incorrect answers to actually hurt people. For example, one AI answer recommended drinking vegetable juice as a home remedy to a burst appendix, and another shared some well-known health benefits of smoking tobacco, such as better lung volume and reduced risks of cancer. To be fair to Google, this isn't entirely on them. Many trolls have hopped on the Google hate train and created fake AI overview screenshots. Many people have also asked weird questions designed to get a harmful answer. Google spokesperson Lara Levin stated that many of the examples we've seen have been uncommon queries. And we've also seen examples that were doctored or that we couldn't reproduce. But regardless of the number of doctored fakes versus real screenshots floating around, public uproar has forced Google to take a step back. Cyrus Shepard, owner of Zippy SEO, said that there seems to be far fewer AI overviews than there were just a few days ago. And real estate marketer Matt McGee also reported that less than 5% of real estate queries he tested have AI overviews. And Lily Ray said she can hardly get AI overviews to trigger at all right now. A report from Kevin Indig on his newsletter Growth Memo goes even further by attempting to gauge the impact of AI overviews on organic traffic. He included 1,675 health queries in his experiment and found that 42% of queries show AI overviews. That seems like quite a lot, especially for the health niche, though the experiment was run from May 7th to May 21st, which is likely before Google started to turn the dial down. His analysis found that AI overviews often reduce traffic to cited URLs. Despite this, the impact can vary depending on the user's intent, with some complex queries potentially benefiting from the increased traffic. Even when AI overviews don't cite the domain, there's still a slight decline in organic traffic, indicating that users still engage with organic results, despite the presence of AI content. This is a small experiment in a single niche, and we'll need much more data to draw conclusions. However, the decrease of AI overviews in the search results, and the early data showing that traffic decline is slight, are both encouraging signs for site owners. Added to this fact, we haven't seen any traffic drop horror stories since the release of AI overviews like we did with the HCU or the March core update. So which of these findings from Google's leaked documents revelations do you think is the most important? And how do you plan to incorporate this new information into your SEO efforts? Let us know in the comments below. We'll be answering them for the next week. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here.